All right, all right, all right, all right. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Comic Book Weekly, a little uh, show here we're doing on our Indie Rundown YouTube page, where we get together and we talk superhero stuff, comics, everything, you know, all the stuff that we grew up on. We love this big universe that really uh, will live on for years and years and years. But um, yeah, we're back here to talk some more uh, superhero stuff. Uh, got a great guest in the house. If, if any of our listeners have listened to our show before, You'll recognize him. He lives in Austin. He's a filmmaker, director, writer. He does it all, man. I don't have to tell you this. Jordan O'Neill, <laughs> what's up, bro? Good to talk to you, man. Good. You too, man. Thanks for having me back. Of course, man. I know we always go back and forth about comic book stuff, so it's nice to be able to like actually talk superhero stuff with you this time. Yeah, when one of us or both of us are awake or not busy, it's, it's nice to make time for it. I know, man. It's kind of nice to take a break from... Because I've been editing and all that other stuff lately. It's nice to take a break from all that stuff to... That's one of the things I love about the show is, you know, it's nice to take a break and just talk about shoot the shit on comic stuff and superhero stuff. So it's really cool, man. Yeah. Just as a fan, not having to worry about it doesn't feel like work, I guess. Exactly, man. Exactly. It's a good escape, man. Well, let me get this out of the way, bro. How you been? How you been? Uh, busy. I can't even remember the last time I talked to you guys. It, it's got to have been months at this point. Time's flying by, but things are going well. And it looks like you guys have a lot of irons in the fire as well yeah we're trying man we're trying to branch out you know luckily we've been getting a lot of out-of-town interviews like people in other states and it's always nice to meet new people and you know we got one in pennsylvania one in cleveland one in oh, canada wow. yeah one in canada we're supposed to talk to soon so yeah we're just trying to make that push man get, get get ourselves out there get more exposure but um yeah i think it was about last summer when we talked to you oh man it might, yeah maybe we had just wrapped production on fable town maybe that's the last time we talked that's right man now, now how's that going real quick uh we're in the middle of post-production uh we got slowed down just because life gets in the way but um mm -hmm. it's the same post-production team more or less different editor this time but same composer same sound editor we got vfx going fast right now and i think we're in the middle of episode three which doesn't sound like a lot of progress but two and four aren't going to be very hard and then right uh Five and six are kind of a part one and part two season finale, but we hope to get that all out to you guys by May or June of this year. So we're working as fast as we can, as hard as we can to make sure it's a quality product because I know people are, are excited to see it and I'm excited to see it as well. Yeah, I think we are too, man. I know I definitely am. And what, what we can do is you got to come back on the, on the main show with me and Mike, man, so we can talk all about it and delve into it. That'll be a, Oh, yeah, for sure. That'll be a fun episode. But, um, but today... We're just here to talk about superhero stuff, man, because that's what this show is. It's it's a great universe, man. There's a lot of nerds out there. Um, oh, yeah. And I know you're a big, well, I know you like them all in, in, in your own roundabout way. So do I. But I think you're a big Spider-Man fan from what you told oh, me. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man and Batman. Those are my, my top two right there. Those are my guys. It's funny that you say that because literally Batman's my number one DC. Spider-Man's my number one Marvel. Always has been. Yep. You know, Same. It's, it's it's crazy. It's cool that we can relate to something like that because everyone's always like, you know, well, Iron Man's my favorite or Thor's my favorite or Hulk's my favorite. It's like, no, Spider, Sp Spidey's my guy, dude. He always has been. Yeah, I mean, he's the reason we got all these movies in the first place. I think you can make that argument. It's either X-Men or the Sam Raimi Spider-Man. Well, I, I would give it to Spider-Man because I'm sure you're aware, but like they, they had been trying to get a Spider-Man movie made since, what, the 80s, 90s? Something like that. I mean, it was yeah. a long, long haul. I know that. I know at one point James Cameron was trying to get one made. Yeah, and which makes you wonder, like, how come he couldn't get it done? That would have made me worry about the whole thing. That's what I'm saying, man. I guess I don't know if the story was, uh, I don't know. I'll have to look into that. That's definitely something to research because if James Cameron can't get a superhero film made, then who and can? Who can? Yeah. <laughs> I mean. That's crazy, dude. That's crazy. Well, uh, yeah, let me, um, first off, I know we, we I know, let me let me start with this. So I don't yeah. think we talked last year um, after Infinity War came out. And I kind of asked the previous guest this because it's always nice to go back and get thoughts when we haven't really had the chance to sit down and talk about it. But real quickly, we don't have to go too far into it. But like, what was your initial thoughts when you saw Infinity War last year? Oh, man. I remember I saw it here in Austin at Bob Bullock IMAX, which is one of the biggest, if not the biggest IMAX screen in Texas. And I think I remember standing in line with uh, my brother and a couple of buddies and we had tickets to the 1030 screening the 730 screening was 
still going on or wrapping up and it was 3d we didn't want to pay 3d price but i yeah. remember putting earbuds in my ears as the 730 show was letting out and i was blasting i think it was honest to god the black panther soundtrack because <laughs> i'm just worried someone's going to come out and say like you know captain america got killed or you know someone's going to scream a spoiler whether it was real yeah. or a lie yeah. but then nobody said anything we're like huh that's very respectful and you know thank you for being respectful and all that and then we went and saw the thing and we realized why they were so quiet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, they were all in shock and disbelief. <laughs> shock, mourning, disbelief, all that. It's. I wonder if you saw the tears because when we went, we. Um, oh yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's funny because when we went, after the one let out before us, there was a couple people that came out. There was a lot of girls that had tears in their eyes, and I'm like, shit, I wish I wouldn't have seen that. So yeah, the whole time uh, I'm thinking, had... the whole time I'm thinking, like, okay, someone's dying, you know? Yeah, who bit it? Yeah, but we um, had people openly sobbing. I think really um yeah I mean the that movie came out of the gate swinging I mean you kill two or maybe not two big ones but I mean Loki is like what within the first 10 minutes oh, he's yeah. out he's gone yeah um and then uh, I forget his name off the top of my head right now but Idris Elba he's Heimdall. gone too Heimdall thank you yeah. yeah and then that raises the question as to who's coming back because then halfway through you get Gamora and that yeah. one was heart wrenching scene yeah yeah and I think when we heard the nose and the the um, the sobs. It was probably I don't remember who went first in what order, but it was definitely Groot and uh, Peter, of course. Mm-hmm. I mean, that oh, was yeah. the one they really uh, drove home. And I like that they did it that way because if you look at people talk about how there's no plot in Marvel, but what they've done is they've given di- different characters arcs. I think over several films, mm-hmm. and not necessarily saying like this is you know Spider Man one, two, and three, but Peter's had an arc with tony and this was act two of that arc with tony i think or maybe three if you want to include civil war i guess because there's been this father-son relationship yeah. going on and i think um with endgame we're going to get the third part of bruce banner and hulk's kind of inner conflict storyline that started in thor ragnarok so it's they've are, they're smart they know what they're doing that's for sure yeah but i loved infinity war yeah and a lot of people always undermine them too you, you really hit the nail on the head I, I gotta agree with you there man like wholeheartedly it's 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 crazy because you know um i i it's pretty obvious too like or at least for me it was like i was a little disappointed the hulk never showed up in infinity war so then it then it made me think like well he's clearly gonna they put him in that trailer yeah 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 and then it made me think he's clearly gonna have a big part in endgame now he's gonna hulk out like like crazy so yeah, you know, I, I I know I've always had trust in Feige. I know mm-hmm. they plan all their stuff out intricately, but um, yeah, man, it's it's a good comparison because Civil War, one of my favorite scenes in that entire movie is when Tony visits Peter, and they just have that little heart to heart, not heart to heart really, but that little conversation. It's just the way they connected like that. It's it's just it really implemented that seed of you know, like you said, that father son type thing, and. To mm-hmm. see Tony watch this kid dust away and he can't do a damn thing about it, it's like, what does that do to his psyche, man? It's crazy. I don't know. And he's been through the worst of it, oh. I would say. I mean, just, to, I don't know how Tony's, the cracks are starting to show, I think, within the personality that you can only, you can only be that guy who's got the quips uh, until you fly a missile through a wormhole, until you get this vision of your all, all your teammates are dead in Ultron and who knew that was actually alluding to the next Avengers film. <laughs> yeah, and, and it kind of leads me to believe, like, uh, I really hope, you know, um, like, to see what he's gone through, I really hope that he kind of gets, I know a lot of people say, okay, with Endgame, you gotta have casualties, and that's fine, you know, you gotta kill some people sure. off, but I really hope he at least gets some type of happy ending, because he's been through a lot, and it would kind of be a little, I don't know what word I'm looking for, it'd kind of be, if he just, like, died, you know, in, in Endgame, it'd yeah. be like... After all that, and he just dies, I feel like he should overcome everything. You know, I'm sure Cap's going to die or go back into the past or whatever. I don't know what's going to happen with him, but... Yeah, a lot of theories floating around about them. Yeah, Tony, it's like, I think he should have the nice retirement send-off. You know, maybe Pepper's pregnant or something, but... Mm -hmm. Like you said, after all he's been through, it's like, this guy can't catch a break. Well, hopefully when they defeat Thanos or whatever they do with him, he gets his break and he can relax. You yeah, know, he's so. got a big part to play. If we, uh, if you want to go back to the theories about you know Strange saying I'm not going to save you, I won't save this boy. Then he gets this vision of we only win one way, and he makes that uh, deal with Thanos, mm-hmm. saying spare him and I'll give you the stone. So clearly, I mean, Strange has seen the whole thing, and Tony has a big part to play. So I don't think he's going to suffocate in space as the in-game trailer would make us believe. Yeah, I mean, but me something's going to happen. 
Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it brings well in that second TV spot we got is it shows him and Nebula fixing something. So it's like, yeah, I thought he would get rescued, but maybe it looks like they're trying to go back to who knows dude, with with who these knows? trailers. Yeah, it's just so you can't tell, man. It's so no. like, but that's they what said they're only giving us the first twenty minutes of the movie into the trailers. So and we haven't seen where Captain Marvel. She might be in those shots and you know digitally mm -hmm. pulled out. So we don't know where she fits into all this either. Yeah, that's what I love about these trailers, man, is like I still have no earthly idea what's going on. And after the Infinity War where they had Hulk clearly in Wakanda and that wasn't the case, you can't even <laughs> trust them half the time. Well, it makes me wonder, like, okay, the VFX guys, I mean, you and I both work in film. You and I know what goes into VFX and how complicated it is. Why would they spend all that time animating a scene with the Hulk like that just to use for a trailer? I guess just marketing purposes? I guess. I mean, because they, they knew it would pull one over our eyes. I think they were really trying to keep the geography of Infinity War and how they were going to split everybody up into kind of like three storylines mm -hmm. really tight-lipped. Because, I mean, we all thought that was Tony in the Hulkbuster in Wakanda as well. At least I did. Yeah. And then, no, he's in space for a good, you know, he's in space, what, after the first 10 minutes, 20 minutes? Yeah. You know, he never like makes that. it back. Yeah, man. So they know what they're doing. I'll give them that. Yeah, they do. I just, I want my mind to be blown <laughs> with Endgame. Same. <laughs> well, let me let me talk to you about that real quick. Let me get some quick theories on your. Uh, what do you what do you see going down in Endgame? What, 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 how are you feeling? Uh, I mean, I'm with you. There's got to be casualties. My biggest questions. I mean, we all know Spider Man's coming back. We know T'Challa's coming back because these are you know franchise guys who are. Yeah. Black Panther's already got its sequel greenlit. We've seen the trailer for Spider Man uh, Far From Home, which takes place after. Yeah. Endgame. We've been told. Strange too. Uh, He'll be, he's getting a sequel. Yeah, Strange. He's coming back. Um. And, yeah, Tony's up in the air because now we heard that Gwyneth Paltrow is done after Endgame. Yeah. But my question is, I don't know if we get Gamora and Vision. I don't know if they come back. I don't really see the need for Vision to come back. He's kind of served I don't either. Oh, and the fun thing now that I don't know this is going to happen because it happened so late in the game uh, within the fiscal year in the production, but because Disney now owns Fox, meaning they now own... Uh, I would assume most of the X-Men and they could start developing them in six months. A theory that I've heard from secondhand from my brother was that, okay, so if we have to have lasting ramifications of what happened in Infinity War with half of you know life being just snapped and gone, mm -hmm. well, if we get them back, it doesn't necessarily mean we're getting everybody back the way they were. And maybe that's how Marvel brings in the idea of people coming back with mutations and that's how we get the X-Men into the MCU. Yeah, I often wondered that, dude. It's funny that you brought that up because I heard another theory too. Like, apparently, this movie—it's not confirmed, obviously—but there's been rumors floating around. Like, is this movie gonna deal with alternate realities, the quantum stuff, like that? And then maybe there's like a hard reset of the timeline or multiverses, because it's always like, well, if they're gonna integrate the uh, X Men into the MCU, how are they going to explain where mutants have been all these years? And I think I think it's right, you know, like. They, yeah, they come from whatever happens in Endgame. Yeah, because the most we got was we got Quicksilver and we got uh, Scarlet Witch, but they were no, they couldn't use the word mutant. I can't remember what they called them in uh, Ultron. Yeah, what did they call them? They called them something. Oh, uh, uh, it was oh shit, enhanced or something? Something like that. They something were, like that. They, they danced around it a little bit. Yeah, it's 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 just I don't know, man. It's I hate that they've done it this way. So I, I'm 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 finally glad to see the merger happening, dude. Mm -hmm. It's it's just always been such so frustrating, you know, like not being able to play with the X-Men or the Fantastic Four or Deadpool, which are all huge parts into the, you know, Marvel comics and stuff like that. So it's going to be a it's going to be a hell of a day when we start to see those guys trinkle in. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah, man. We were actually talking about that last week on uh, on the show about how they would in integrate the X-Men and Fantastic Four. So, yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to I mean, I still stand by the fact that people are gunning for I mean this is a pipe dream but get the Fantastic Four and get John Krasinski and Emily Blunt to be uh, dude Mr. Fantastic and I mean let him direct it I think that'd be a hell of a pick especially since she was almost uh, Black Widow yeah I'm, I'm really high on that too uh, I've actually talked about that with someone I don't know if it was you or not might have been somebody. I don't else, think but. so. Oh, I think I did hear that. Maybe I heard it from one of y'all's episodes the other week. I'm not sure, but yeah, but you're you're right though, man. It's a it's a long running. A lot of fans were clamoring for that last year. I remember seeing an article with Krasinski himself. He was saying like, "Yeah, dude, I'd love to do something like that." And it's like, dude, yeah. Marvel, 
you better take note. Right? I mean, you almost had him for Captain America. I forgot to mention that as well. So That's what I'm saying, man. Like, that's a great pair, dude. Oh, yeah. And they're, they're both fantastic. Yeah, and with the X-Men, I think I said this last week, is I think they should... Uh, let me get your thoughts on that. Should they completely reboot or bring the Apocalypse ones in? Uh, man, I mean... I'll be honest with you, one of my favorite superhero movies, I think, is Days of Future Past, and Apocalypse was, I mean, Apocalypse is not going to live up to that. Oh, yeah, no. There's no chance no. in hell, but man, it was, it felt rushed, it was a strange movie, and now they keep pushing Dark Phoenix around, and I, I can't tell you that I can think of a single actor that could or would even want to take on Wolverine at this point after the job Hugh Jackman did it. I right, mean, right. I think they need to be very sparingly pick which characters they decide to bring in, because... I mean, that, that is the risk of having too many characters that they, they decide to dump them all in. And they've been good about not doing that thus far, but I don't want them to just, you know, like you said, we've got all these toys to play with now. Let's just put them in a big pile because I think if we do that, then we're in trouble. We fall into like a Spider-Man 3 situation or, mm-hmm. God forbid, an amazing Spider-Man situation. Oh, God, don't even go there. <laughs> no. Oh, man. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm actually glad it happened with the amazing Spider-Mans because we never would have got Homecoming. So, True. You know, uh that that just that in itself was just a travesty, man. I, oh, I had were... uh, I had such high hopes for that movie. Oh man, for uh, the amazing ones. Yeah, the the first yeah. one I enjoyed a little bit, but I had high hopes for the second one because I knew you know at the time they were like, yeah, they're going to start delving into the Sinister Six and the Osborns are coming into the fold, and you know J. J. Jonah Jameson's going to come in at some point. And it's just like, all right, cool, let's see what they do here, and then. Then Amazing Spider-Man Two comes out and it's just a a, a train wreck and it's just it was it was a hot mess of like, a movie yeah I couldn't it's like, believe it what are we doing guys what are we doing and I think that came down to to casting I've always said I mean you're you're a Batman fan so I want to ask you this question actually um you know which one is the mask which one is what which one is the mask well um I gotta say man I uh I I can't I don't. Are you talking like the new, just all time, like out of all the actors? Oh, no, I mean, yeah. Well, no. I'm, what I'm saying is, when you think of Batman, is Batman the mask or is it Bruce Wayne? Ooh, good question, man. Good question. I want to say a little bit of both, man. Yeah, because I think in my in my uh, imagination or whatever, uh, having been a fan, you know, since my parents maybe they shouldn't have let me, but I, you know, I grew up watching the '90s animated series. Mm-hmm. But to me, Bruce Wayne dies in that alley. And so for the rest of his life, we're, it's Batman and Bruce Wayne is the mask he wears to fit into society to, right. you know, schmooze the higher ups. But I think Bruce, to me, Bruce Wayne dies in that alley and Batman is born out of that tragedy. Yeah, and no, so that's, that's, that's a good way to man. look at it. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it, man. Um, yeah. But the reason I brought that up is so that I think that when you're casting actors for these films, especially when you're going to get a new actor, Andrew Garfield, fantastic actor was not a good Peter Parker. No, no. Was not a fan of his Peter Parker interpretation at all. No, me neither. So. Me neither. And I know I got into yeah. a lot of arguments about that with a lot of people over the years, but, mm-hmm. you know, it's just it's just a choice of personal preference. But when you know, like, Spider-Man as well as me and you do, you know, growing up and mm-hmm. into the comics, I don't know if you read the comics a lot, but I know I did growing up. I read a lot of Spider-Man comics, watched his TV shows yeah. and stuff like that. And it's just like, you know, he just did not encapsulate what Peter Parker was no. to me. You know, Toby did a little bit, but still it was a little off, but I still enjoyed it much better yeah. than Garfield. Um, but man, Tom Holland, dude, that's that. A lot of people don't like Tom Holland as the young kid Spider-Man, but it's like, yeah, I love it, dude. I love it. That's And to me, I think, yeah, Toby and Tom Holland, they're completely different in interpretations of the same character. And you can like both. I don't think that's a problem. And I mean... Right. I love that Toby definitely played up the uh, the nerdy side. I think that's what Garfield failed to do is that, um, you know, in Toby's version, uh, he gets the powers and he changes a little bit and he toys with the idea of using them for his selfish um, means and whatnot. And then the inciting incident of losing Uncle Ben kind of resets that and he realizes that uh, it, it takes you back to the great power, great responsibility thing and that becomes the code. And so he's still that nerdy guy. And that's what Tom Holland does so well is that he's had these powers, but it doesn't change who he is at his core and his personality. He's still this awkward, mm-hmm. dorky dude who just happens to have these super enhanced abilities. Yeah, and they made him smart too. That's what I loved. Is Oh, yeah. I, what, one thing I didn't love about the Raimi films, and I think a lot of fans didn't like this either, but 
I didn't like the whole the webs came out of his arms. Um, yeah, that was a little weird. I mean, I think I was young enough where I didn't even phase me that that was a departure from the source material. But then you go back and look at the 90s show yeah. and you're like, oh, that is, yeah, where is it coming from? Like, what is that yeah, about? Yeah, it's like, dude, you got webs coming out of you, man. And it, That's some um, Evil Dead leftover stuff that Sam Raimi uh, had, I guess, in his back pocket or something. Yeah, right, dude. It, what I didn't like about it is, that's what I loved about the comics and stuff like that is he built them himself and it, it adds a risk factor of, what if his revving runs out? He can't fly anymore. He's he, he's 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 shit out of luck. So, with yep. the artificial ones, it's like, well, he's never gonna have a, a problem with that, you know. So right. And Unless plus, he doesn't. I don't know. Drink enough milk or something. I'm not sure where they come from. Yeah, exactly, man. It was just it was weird. It's like it's wrapped around his arms or inside his arm. Who knows, dude? But yeah, it was yeah. it was it was a weird deviation from the source material. But it wasn't enough to ruin the it wasn't enough to ruin the movies for me. But um, yeah. that's what I loved about the new the homecoming is. You know, you see him in science class, you see him in the lab, you see him making the web fluid, and it's like, yeah, that's what, that's the shit I love. And that's one thing I hate about moving to Batman real quick. Yeah. Out of all the Batman films we've ever gotten, I really don't, and I said this in a previous episode, but I want to reiterate it with you because I know you're a Batman fan too. It's like, I feel like they've never, they've done little hints here and there, barely. I know in Dark Knight they did with Christian Bell, there was a couple scenes where they did, but I feel like they've never truly touched upon his true detective nature his detective mode like it's yeah uh, yeah dude i feel like they've never really explored that no they haven't really and i think uh i mean i i think ben affleck did a great job with the role he had the just the right presence that i was looking for mm -hmm. but you're right we didn't he was kind of like a side character he didn't have a solo film of to himself the way christian bale did right but you're right they did need they really do need to nail down that he is the world's greatest detective and you don't just get that title without earning it right so yeah right. i'm hoping this new one that uh is it matt reeves is that the yeah name? yeah yeah he actually said yeah he actually came out and said that they're going to touch upon his detective roots so it's like dude okay cool and yeah can i please say like can we get a younger batman like i love ben affleck was cool you know i had no problem sure with him. but what i didn't like about it was it was an older batman you know well past his days it's like well we didn't get to see all of his crime fighting like his prime yeah you know, we didn't get to see all that so can it's we like least... we started with the Dark Knight Returns Batman, which is a strange yeah. choice to make when you're starting a, a cinema anthology, so to speak, or you know, a series of films, and you start with the oldest possible version of the character. Yeah, man. It's like, let's see him go through the... It doesn't have to be an origin story, but let's see him at least go through the ranks and face all these villains and have his... Let's see his career, basically. So I'm hoping, yeah. they'll, uh, I'm hoping they'll retouch upon that, but... Same. Yeah, man. I just I don't need to see his parents die anymore. They need to do the homecoming route. Like we all know, Peter gets bit by the spider, yep. loses his uncle. We don't need to see Bruce Wayne's parents get killed one more time. I think I've seen it nine times. Yeah, in the theaters at this point. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, and with Uncle Ben, it's like okay, well, what happened there is in future homecoming films, it'd be kind of cool to see like a flashback or something like that. Because I'm interested, since they didn't show Uncle Ben getting killed, now I want to see, like, okay, it'd be cool to see him pop up at some point, you know, just to maybe have a talk with him or a vision or something. Because yeah. we didn't get to see him die, so now it adds that level of intrigue for me of, like, oh, I kind of want to see, like, a little flashback. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, because now I think, it, this is purely a guess, but I'm guessing that what they've done, at least in the MCU canon, is that maybe Peter isn't so much involved in the death of Uncle Ben as he has been in previous films, because Tom Holland doesn't seem like he's playing that aspect in his performance. And that's okay with me, that those the um, inception of Spider-Man and the powers don't have anything to do with Uncle Ben being murdered. I don't think those have to connect each other necessarily. Yeah, so we'll yeah, exactly. And then and then they just pull a, a complete shift out of left field in Spider Man three and like, oh no, Sandman's now responsible for your, your uncle's death. It's like Oh man. Cool. Three years later, okay. Yeah. We're That's, just now figuring this out. Yeah, great like great detective work, guys. Um <laughs> ridiculous dude. <laughs> I could I could rant on Spider Man three all day, man. But uh Oh uh, yeah. You know, it, funny story real quick. We went to I'm sure you remember Spider Man three came out. It was mm -hmm. insanely hyped coming out. I remember oh, yeah. the anticipation was through the roof. I went with a few buddies. We got midnights. This was back when there was no like seven, ten o'clock showings. It was all like straight at yeah. midnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or uh, they might have had some at 11, but I think there was mostly at 12. But yeah, we went to the midnight screening opening night, May 4th. I'll never forget it. And we get into the movie. 
First off, the movie takes forever to premiere, and then I think about 15 minutes in, um, the scene where uh, the scene where Harry attacks him, and they have that big yeah. fight in the sky. The projector goes out, man. Oh and my god! Yeah, so everyone in the theater just loses their shit. It's we're, we're all stressed. We're all like, because I mean, we've been waiting for this movie for three years. Because there was a three year gap between this and two, and there was only a two year gap. That's between, right. Yeah, and it was for whatever reason. Um, but um, yeah, I think they rewrote the script because they had teased that like the lizard was going to be the villain or something like that. Yeah, which I, I would have been cool with that, but sure, you know, um, yeah, dude. So. The projector goes out, so we just kind of people start getting up, you know, getting pissed off, and some people actually left. They walked out of the theater, but we, oh God. we sat still. We said, "All right, just hold on, man. They'll get it together." Like 15 minutes later, the rest of the movie came out, and that was probably the most loudest midnight premiere. Because honestly, man, as much as I love these movies, I'm really not a big midnight screener guy because I like to go watch a movie and. Like, these midnight crowds, man, some of them can just get really annoying. They're loud. They can get rowdy. Yeah, it's like, I I get it, man. I understand the anticipation. I'm so hyped, just like you guys, but I'm trying to watch the damn movie, too, at the same time. So, you know, but, uh, yeah, it was a fun experience, regardless of how shitty the movie turned out to be. But, yeah, it was just funny. That was the only time a projector's ever gone out, like, straight. Like, right when they started fighting, Harry picks them up out of the street, and they start fighting in the sky and just (laughs) craps out. It was funny. But um, yeah, a little, little funny omen. story from that night. <laughs> yeah, it was an omen. That's a good point, dude. <laughs> That's a good point. Like the projector was trying to tell us, like, "Hey, get away!" Because you don't, you don't even want to see what happens to Venom. So get away. You could still get re- your refund right now. We're, we're warning you. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, hey, real, real quick. While speaking of Venom, let me. I don't yeah. think we talked about that. Let me get your thoughts on that movie. Uh, I haven't seen it. I'll be honest. Really, with you. I haven't seen it. I've heard it's hilarious. Really? Uh, okay. That's what I've heard. Yeah, I was in a. I wasn't a huge, too big of a fan. I mean, I was one of those people that like really. If you're not gonna do this thing as an R movie, why do it at all? Because it felt to me like they were definitely going for like a Deadpool feel to it, but they weren't going all the way. Uh, but I, I mean, it was a, it was a huge success. So what the hell do I know? Yeah, but I mean, yeah, it, I've I'll get to it eventually, but it's not on my short list, I guess. Yeah, it uh, it had its moments. Um, I wasn't too high on it. It was it was enjoyable for the most part, but my whole thing was. Why are you making a Venom movie without Spider-Man, dude? I, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, just at especially least, when, especially when what? Uh, Spider Verse. I mean, that was my number two last year. I mean, that you want to talk about a good Spider-Man oh. movie? That's the best Spider-Man movie ever made, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I was get, I was slowly getting, <laughs> I was slowly yeah. getting there, but <laughs> no, it's just like uh, this whole Venom thing, and now they're talking about trying to start like a universe, and it's like, why, dude? We got Spider-Man in the MCU, man. You don't, you know, that's, that's Sony for you. They keep trying, God. God bless them. They keep trying. It's but, it's uh, it's like Fox, man. It's just like you're kind of past uh kind of past the point of no return at this point. Um, yeah, if, if you'd asked me two years ago, I would have told you that Disney was going to buy Sony uh, once there was a bad James Bond film. Not that that should ever happen, but I thought Sony was going to be the first to go. This Fox thing kind of came out of left field to me because they had Avatar. You know, had a lot of properties going for them, but yeah, here we are. Yeah, here we are, and you know, hopefully, like I said, hopefully the MCU can get them right, man. That's that's all I want to see, you know. Yeah. But well, if anybody can, it's them. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. But um, but yeah, no, Ven- Venom was cool, man. It was just you know, uh, that was my whole thing. I mean, Tom Hardy was cool, but uh, yeah, it just either way you look at it, man. At the end of the day, I, I knew in the back of my head that well, at the end of the day, Spider Man's not going to be around. So it's like, I don't know. It just feels weird. It's like making a. It's like making a Green Goblin movie without Spider Man, or uh, yeah, you know. So did it feel like something was missing when you watched it? Yeah, a little bit. Like the Joker movie coming out this year, it's like, well, is Batman gonna be a part in it? Is not? Is yeah. this like its own solo movie? I mean, what what is it, and why should I care? I mean, yeah, it's weird. This partial reset DC is kind of doing with some of these uh, characters. I'm not really sure what's gonna happen with them, bro. That's a whole another story, right? I have no oh, yeah. clue what DC's doing right now. Yeah, that's a whole other episode, right? There. Yeah, it's it's just it's just mind boggling. Like I don't I don't know what they're doing. It, like I don't know if they hit the panic button. You know, they're focusing on all the wrong movies right now. Like you you should not be doing. Granted, I love the source material, but it's like you should not be doing a a Birds of Prey movie. You should not be doing a Shazam movie. You need to be focusing on your core characters and giving them solo movies and building up a universe, man. It's yeah, because they're, they've lost some characters, but we've still got, you know, Jason Momoa, and we've got Wonder Woman 1984 coming out, which I feel like, I mean, they must have fairly 
a fair amount of confidence, excuse me, with uh, Wonder Woman because I mean it's still Gal Gadot and she's killing the role. I want to see more of her, but it's weird that we're gonna reset some characters and keep some of the old characters around. So if you ever bring them together, mm-hmm. it's gonna have this very strange feeling that we've seen the same Wonder Woman with potentially two different Justice Leagues. I'm not really sure what's gonna happen. Yeah, I don't understand that either, man. That's what, like, are they how are they gonna do that? She's just gonna act like nothing happened, like everything's just been the same. You got me swinging. <laughs> No idea. <laughs> I guess we'll find out the uh, hard way. Yeah, dude. Unfortunately, man. Like DC's got a lot of work to do, and I and I hate to say that because I, that's for sure. I love DC, man. I love both. I'm not a I'm not a Marvel Marvel oh, yeah. DC. I hate when people say that. It's like, well, pick one. It's like you don't have to pick one, dude. I don't. Yeah. I mean, if they both are doing well, then we as audience members and fans, we win. That's what I'm saying. That's man. the goal. Exactly, dude. We're, we're. I mean, obviously, you know this, dude. What a time to be alive for a comic book fan. It's just. I mean. It's insane, but you know when when you see this franchise just struggling along and making all the wrong decisions, it's like I don't know, dude. And I don't know how to feel about this Shazam movie coming out in a few weeks. I don't really know anything about Shazam. uh, Yeah, me neither. I forgot about that. The only thing I know about him is from uh, Young Justice, the TV show, which is fantastic. I haven't seen the latest season because I haven't subscribed to DC's streaming platform yet. But from what little I know about him is from that. So. It's got potential. I think they got a good actor who can walk the line of, you know, action and comedy, but it remains to be seen. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, speaking of upcoming films, let's talk about the big one. Uh, well, obviously, Endgame's the big one, but since we're those Spider-Man films, Spider-Man fans, how are you feeling about Far From Home, bro? Far From Home, yeah, uh, I'm excited. I think Mysterio is a fun character, and what's even more fun is, I think, the behind-the-scenes uh you know, we we now have this uh, persona of Tom Holland being the spoilery guy. Yeah, and I don't know. I follow him on Instagram, and he keep he keeps putting up these funny uh, behind the scenes videos that are they're clearly staged. But that's kind of the fun to it is that there's he finds Jake Gyllenhaal reading lines in the the hotel bathroom, and he's like, Jake, what are you doing, mate? Oh, I'm learning my lines. Jake, you know you're not Spider Man, right? Wait, what? <laughs> no, I'm Spider Man. Oh, and the joke there is that apparently between Spider-Man 1 and 2 or maybe 2 and 3 of the same Raimi era there was talks with Tobey Maguire and they had to renegotiate stuff and Jake Gyllenhaal was on the shortlist to replace him if negotiations fell through so mm-hmm. I kind of like that they're you know Jake's finally in a Spider-Man movie and yet he's not still not Spider-Man yeah, but it yeah. looks fun uh, It's it made me realize oh yeah Spider-Man and, and Nick Fury have never seen each other in the flesh yet there's still these relationships that are left to be built because the MCU is just so massive now. So I think it looks fun. I'm looking forward to it. I uh, can't wait to see what they do with it. I am too, man. It's kind of cool to see them in a new territory, Europe and stuff like that. And, uh, new interactions, like you said, with Nick Fury. And my whole thing is I want to know, like what happens in Endgame game that, cause looking at the Spider-Man trailer, it looks like nothing's nothing happened. Everything looks back to normal, you know, happy go lucky, no devastating consequences. So it's like, it kind of makes me wonder, like, I don't know, man, because Nick Fury's back, Spider-Man's back, everything looks everything looks back to normal. So it's like, how the hell are they going to reset what Thanos did? Are they still going to be aware of what happened? Is Spider-Man, does he know that he turned to dust, or is it going to, like, get reset to where it just never happened, which I think personally is what happens. But, yeah, Could man. Be. Yeah, it was just... I think we uh, have to think more about where Mysterio... Um, I'm not too familiar with his comic book. Uh, oh, I love Mysterio. Source material. Favorites, man. But, so, with the MCU, uh, then you can tell me, does he... I don't know if he's, like, a scientist or whatever, and that's how he gets these powers, but maybe... We were talking about those mutations in people. Is that maybe, maybe where Mysterio is getting the superpowers that we're seeing on display in Far From Home? Well, and maybe he's born out of the aftermath of Endgame. I don't know. Well, you never know. Or, you know, maybe they did some type of... Um, reset to a timeline to where like you said before it opens up a doorway to some people getting mutations or something like that yeah i don't know i mean there's there's never uh i mean there's like i'm trying to wrap my head around how they could how they could do that because um yeah man i don't know dude it's 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 interesting because and it's also it Dude, when you start thinking about all this stuff, it, it makes my head hurt, honestly. But oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's like just, talking about time travel at this point. Yeah. Dude, oh, which I, I think yeah. we're going to have to learn about when Captain Marvel comes out in a couple of weeks. Time travel's got to be an element there. Yeah, yeah, exactly, dude. Um, that's another thing, man. It's like I've been preaching this since the beginning is like 
Captain Marvel takes place in the 90s. Endgame takes place now. Where the hell has this girl been the past 20 years? Yeah, who apparently, according to Kevin Feige, is the most powerful Marvel hero they've yet to make a film about. And, I mean, the trailers look awesome. I'm looking forward to the movie. They couldn't have picked a better actress, I think, to bring her to life. But, yeah, I definitely want to see how, because I don't know a lot about the character, how she works, how she operates, and definitely how she fits into Endgame. Yeah, and and like I said, where she's been and why she's just showing up now as opposed to Ultron in the first Avengers movie and, you know, even uh, even Civil War. I mean, you, well, you really didn't need her there, but, like, at least Ultron in the other one, life-threatening New York and stuff like that. It's like, where the hell have you been, girl? And she's yeah, reachable, she's, you know? Nick Fury's able to page her, so it's like... Uh, yeah, she must have been his big ace in the hole, apparently. Cause. That's what I'm saying, dude, so... I don't know. Maybe Fury knows something we don't, you know, and we'll learn about it. But, uh, yeah, I'm really curious to see what happens in Captain Marvel because Captain Marvel I'm not too familiar with. I've read up on her uh, here lately. I've gotten to read some of her comics and stuff like that and study her character and her history. But um, it's kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy and Doctor Strange. I didn't know too much about them when they first came out, but loved yeah, all the movies. Here. And I have no no reason to think I'm not going to like this movie. I think it's, it, it looks pretty cool, you know, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm curious to see how that's going to play out, man. But no, back to Mysterio because I know we're all over the place, but that's fine. <laughs> you know, but uh, Mysterio is. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious that all the villains that we saw in the trailer, like I think I don't know if it's Hydro Man. People are saying it's Hydro Man, but it's. I think they're all elemental creatures. That what I think is happening is Mysterio's creating all these monsters, comes in, acts like the hero to save them. Same. It's it's yeah. the Incredibles. It's Syndrome. It's his kind of. Ex- exactly plot. makes himself look like a hero too. yeah that he's uh because i mean i'm honest the only way i know about mysterio is from the spider-man 2 movie video game where mysterio was this guy who just he, like, he had like his own tv show or some crap like that and so he clearly loves the spotlight and wants to be in it yeah yeah i agree man i heard a rumor too that this could be kind of cool is in far whether it be in far from home or another movie but down the road i heard they're saying like avengers tower in new york could become oscorp tower Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, they haven't, we haven't brought them into... That's what I'm saying, in, man. Yeah. Like, if you think about it, dude, like, with Tom Holland's Spider-Man, I, I so want to see J. Jonah Jameson come in, that Osborne's come in at some point, Doc Ock come in at some point. I don't know how Venom would work, if they would sure just either. create their own Venom or whatever, but at some point down the road, we're going to start getting all these... Badass villains, which I love how they're doing new villains. Like we got Vulture with Homecoming, and now we're getting Mysterio villains that have never been touched before in the other movies. But at some point, yeah, you're gonna have to start bringing in all the older ones. Yeah, and then I can't remember. Is it? It's either Shocker or Electro. I I want to say that Michael Keaton was talking Shocker. to at the end. Shocker. See, I get them confused because their powers are way too similar for me. Oh wait, but, you mean yeah. you mean in the prison scene? In the prison scene. No, yeah, that was yeah. that was uh, Scorpion. Oh, Scorpion, you're right. My yeah, that fault. Was Scorpion. I'm, you know what? I'm probably thinking about the PS4 Spider-Man. That's no, Shocker, throwing oh, me off. <laughs> Shocker was in the movie, though. He was that dude with the little thing on his hand. But Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and I don't know if you heard about this, but uh, you saw Into the Spider-Verse. Um, the Prowler, who's uh, Miles' uncle, Aaron. Yeah. Apparently, that's who Donald Glover was playing in Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah, I heard something about that. So, I don't know where they're going with that. And maybe they're leaving that open to where, I mean, they've... Clearly, Spider-Man has to be a, an actual man first before Miles could even show up in the live action if they want to. So right. they're definitely leaving it open for a lot of possibilities with him. They're well, playing it, you know, close to the chest. Yeah, and that's one thing I loved about the Spider-Man game. It's funny that you brought the game up because I loved the interaction because I, was wor- I wasn't I was worried, but I was wondering, because you know, how the hell are they going to do Peter and Miles in the same game? But I, I loved right. the connection. You know, the, the chemistry was great. The way... Miles fit into the game storyline. It was like this is pretty fun. This is pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I was a big fan of that game. I think oh, they <laughs> knocked out of the park. I love that game, dude. I was like, I want another one. So Absolutely. Hopefully, they're making a sequel to that game. But um, oh yeah, yeah. If but, sales are any way to determine sequels, then yeah, they're gonna make another one. I think I heard a rumor they were, um, which they need to because after they ridiculously stopped making Arkham games, that kind of left me deprived. So this right. this was a nice fix because Absolutely. it's like. Come on, uh, Rocksteady. Like, Arkham Knight was one of the best games. I loved it, you know? And it's like, oh, that's yeah. it? You guys are done? Okay. Cool. Yeah. I mean, there's not much you can do after the story of Arkham Knight, but they're working on something we just haven't heard yet. I hope so, man. I hope so. Well, let's talk about uh, 
into the Spider Verse real quick before we wrap this up, man. Sure. Give me your thoughts on that, bro. I know you got a lot. Oh, of that was that was a ten out of ten. Uh, I, I mean, here's here's the funny part. We talked about Spider Man three had three villains. We couldn't do it, but here, just hang on. We're gonna put six heroes into this movie, <laughs> and oh god, how are you gonna make it work? Well, they damn sure did. I don't know how they did it, but they did. Everybody, and I loved how each character had their own art style, especially mm-hmm. uh, Penny Parker. How um her mouth and her voice never quite. S- we're in sync the way anime usually is when it's yeah. dubbed over. Yeah. And how John Mulaney's a uh, spider pig just was a Looney Tune. And all the and I mean I've never seen a movie like that that looked like an actual <laughs> comic book come to life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean yeah, I was blown away. I think I saw it twice in the theater and I know I'm gonna be going to Best Buy in the next couple weeks to pick that up for sure. Yeah, it was a good style, man. I, I really loved the uh that's what, that's what I love too, man. I love the ensembleness of it. You know, how they how all these characters interacted with each other because it's kinda like, Well, how the hell are they gonna do this? You know, I remember going in like, how the hell are they gonna do that? You know, but the way they pulled it off, man, it was brilliant, dude. Um Yeah, and they killed Peter Parker within the first ten minutes. Yep. Yep. Which was wild. Yep. And I love how there are actual two different voice actors playing Peter Parker. So that they they killed Chris Pine at the beginning and then we got Jake Johnson for the rest of it, which was the Spider Man we all know, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but no, I, 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 I just, I, I loved it, man. I loved it, you know. And I don't know, um, I don't know if they're making a. Where do they go from here? Are they making another one of that? Yeah, they're gonna make a sequel to Spider Verse, and then Spider Gwen is going to get her own movie, which may introduce um, like Silver Spectre, is that her name, and Spider Woman, and some of the other female characters from other verses. So I think they're, they're confident, and, and then apparently like. Spider Pig could get like an animated short cartoon show or something. I, I'd be down for Nicolas Cage to keep playing Spider Man Noir for the rest of his life. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely, <laughs> dude. I, I'm a huge fan of Nicolas Cage, so that was just that was money for me. Um Oh yeah. But did you see did you see this in three D or no? Uh no, I never caught it in three D. I saw it twice in two D. Oh right. And well of course I don't know if that was just a big joke at the end with um Oscar Isaac being Spider Man twenty ninety nine, but that was a great little possibly uh tease for another character to show up but i love the ending that they were just making fun of themselves yeah yeah kind of like uh deadpool yep very much or like deadpool deadpool too <laughs> he goes back and he does everything <laughs> that's right yeah dude uh yeah spider verse was a 10 out of 10 yeah no no very very solid movie man i was obviously being a huge spider-man fan it was it was everything but I wanted you, it to be, dude. So you saw it in 3D. It was how yeah. was it? Yeah, no, it was good. It was good because it, honestly, I'm not really a big fan of seeing stuff in 3D. Uh, sure. Like especially live action action films. Like all the MCU movies, I don't see in 3D just because one, it kind of gives me a headache, and two, I feel like sometimes it takes away from my viewing experience at least. But uh, yeah, I really love seeing animated movies in 3D. Like I'll go catch a Pixar movie every now and then, you know, with a, with some kids or you know, a girl or whatever and uh, like Mm -hmm. stuff like that. But those movies, yeah, I'll always see those in 3D. Yeah, I I wanted to catch it. I just couldn't find a a screening near me that was offering it in 3D. But yeah, I really wish that I had. I'm with you on that. Well, get get yourself a 3D TV. Yeah, uh, I'm going to have to do that. (laughs) Hey, man, experience it, dude. It was great. It was great. Once these acting gigs start picking up and I can afford a 3D TV, yeah, that'll be the ticket. That's what I'm saying, man. You know, in due time, bro, in due time. But, um, yeah, man, we, we could talk about this till we're blue in the face. Um, oh, for sure. But, um, yeah, let's 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 move on to some uh, – I got a little uh, trivia segment for you before we wrap this oh, up. Oh, man, okay. Yeah, I wanted to do – I got a little 10-question quiz for you. It's all about the Spider-Man films. Um, oh, boy, here we go. Yeah, so – I don't know if you're ready. Uh, some are easy because I know we've talked about some of the stuff in here. Some are some are softballs. Sure. But but you never I know what you're going to get. So, of course. But, <laughs> you know, sometimes when I find these quizzes or, or write them out and then we start talking about the subject material, I'll hear like, oh, shit, he, he's easy. Well, he's going to get that question. Uh, <laughs> it happens all the time, man. It happens all the time. But it Fair makes enough. for a good. Yeah, it makes for a good game, though. So. So what Absolutely. we're going to do is we're going to run through 10 questions. It's all on Spider-Man, all movies. The Raimi films, the the uh, the, the the disgusting, amazing films in Homecoming and um, Spider-Verse. So, all right, let's do it. We're just going to jump right into it, man. Let's start with question number one. What is the real name of the lizard? 
the real name of the lizard. Oh, man. Dr. Connors. All right, I'll give you that. I'll give you yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm blanking on his first name. It's Kurt Connors, but I'll give you Kurt that. Kurt Connors. I was like, I knew it had to Kurt be Connors. one of those alliteration Stan Lee names. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll give you that. We'll give you that. All right, partial credit. Yeah. Question two. <laughs> Who played Harry Osborn in The Amazing Spider-Man 2? What was the actor's name? In The Amazing Spider-Man 2? Isn't that uh, Dave DeHaan? Is that how you say his name? It's Dane DeHaan. Dane DeHaan. Okay, yeah. I was like, not Dave. Dane DeHaan. Yeah. All right. That was you knew who you were one. talking about, though, and you were oh, pretty yeah. close. So I'll I give saw you his that. face. <laughs> I'll give you that. I'll give you that one. All right. Question number three. In Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, who voices Gwen Stacy? This is easy. Gwen Stacy, Spider-Gwen. That is, oh, knowledge don't fail me now. She's from True Grit. She was just in Bumblebee. <laughs> Haley Steinfeld. There you go. There you go. There it is. I said this is easy, and then you started stumbling. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, oh, no. Uh, Come on, man. All right, let's move to question number four. In Spider-Man Homecoming, what is the name of the AI in Spider-Man's suit? What name does he give her? Oh, man. What name name does he give her? Yeah. Oh, sure. I haven't seen them. Yeah, I was... See, I almost said Friday, and I know that's wrong. Yeah, that's Tony's. Uh, Yeah, it's Tony's. Oh, shoot. And you know what? I keep thinking of Infinity War when he... Tony says Friday, send him home. But uh, you know, I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, and strangely it's enough, stupid like suit. It's Karen. Karen, looking for Karen. <laughs> but strangely <laughs> enough, we don't hear Karen in Infinity War. He never talks to her. No, that's true. It's kind of strange, even though he was yeah. barely in costume, but still. Are oh, you doing good though, yeah. man? You got you only got one wrong so far. Question number five in Spider Man Two: What type of isotope does Doctor Octopus need for his fusion reactor? What something he... something radioactive. I, I Man, oh, that's a tough one. I, a... I don't know. I really don't know. I was never good in science as a kid, so it's not going to help me now. Okay. It's uh, tritium. <laughs> Looking for tritium. Tr- tritium. I almost told you unobtainium from Avatar. <laughs> God, don't mention Avatar to me, dude. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's move on to question number six. Who wrote Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? What two directors... What two famous directors wrote Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? Oh, that's uh, Chris Miller and Phil Lord, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. there you go, man. Yeah, the guys behind Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs and the Lego movies. And uh, a good portion of Solo. That's right. <laughs> and 21 Jump Street. Man, those guys have... They're just yeah. batting homers. Yeah, for sure, man. Question number seven. In the 2002 original, um, before his match with Bonesaw McGraw, played by Randy Savage... What mm-hmm. was the original name that Spider-Man gave himself to be announced as? <laughs> the Human Spider. There you go. Good oh, shit, Oh, that man. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Good shit. <laughs> like I was telling you before we started recording, I actually I watched that last night, and that kills me every time, Bruce Campbell. Dude. Oh, it's so funny. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, Bruce. That's, that's the best you can come up with? Come on, kid. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. It's still, oh, man. man. I need to rewatch those. It's it's a good nostalgic rewatch every now and then. I love watching mm-hmm. the first and second one. Um, it just brings back a lot of memories, man. At this point, oh same here. Because you know, I was like thirteen or fourteen when the first one came out, and it was just everything I could have ever imagined. You know. Yeah, so. I think I was eleven or twelve, depending. It was a summer movie. I was probably eleven years old. Yeah, it blew my mind. Yeah, it was it was great, man. So it always holds that with the music, just everything about it. It, it just screams being a kid again and feeling nostalgic. I I, I love it, dude. The the two thousand two one will always hold a special place in me for that reason but absolutely speaking of the 2002 film question eight who played uncle ben in the raimi films oh you know i don't know uh he's since passed unfortunately i know that and yep. the, the woman who played aunt may has as well but i don't know his name it's cliff robertson cliff robertson oh little, man yeah toughy question number nine in spider-man three this might be a tough one what is the name of sandman's daughter Karen. <laughs> good, good Karen callback. Friday. That was her name, right? Good callback, man. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, we were looking for Penny. Penny Marco. Oh, man. Oh, I should have just guessed Penny Parker from yeah, Spider-Verse. That would have gotten me man. halfway there. Real, real quick, man. <laughs> right? Real yeah. quick. What did, what did you think of Sandman? How did you feel about that? In Spider-Man 3? Yeah. I mean... Some cool effects for the time, but the whole Uncle Ben thing, uh, no, it was too much. I would have been fine with just Venom 
because Venom was more personal with the symbiote, yeah, and Harry was more personal with that. I think he was just, you know, too much. I think that's what overdid it. Yeah, yeah. And, and originally, I heard something too where the original idea was J. Jonah Jameson's son, John Jameson, aka mm-hmm. the Wolfman from the comics. He's an astronaut. Uh, in the original idea or script of the movie, he was going to be in space, and he comes back. And the symbiote attached to his ship, or he brings it back with him un- unintentionally, and that's how the symbiote comes across Peter. Well, they rewrote uh. it due to budget problems to just where, oh no, him and Mary Jane are just out in the woods, and it just randomly comes down to Earth right in front of them. It's like, dude, look, even if it was too much budget and you had to rewrite it, you still could have mentioned in like dialogue like how Jameson's son came back and brought the symbiote with him. You didn't have to yeah. completely change it. It was such a stupid cop-out, in my opinion. Oh, you could have just cast some young woman as a reporter, and she's interviewing him. Yeah, dude, astronaut. something like that, man. But, oh, no, it it takes. Just, the symbiote just lands right next to him. You know, okay, yeah. oh, cool, man. I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, yeah dude, terrible. Wow, yeah, that's and, a sore thumb. It, yeah, and then Topher Grace just happens to be at the same church, and it, he becomes, come on, dude. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Eddie decides to find religion on the just yeah. the same night that, yeah, it's a little. It's I, I always thought Venom's motivations in that movie were terrible because he's like, oh, you made me lose Gwen Stacy. It's like, we didn't get to know you and Gwen Stacy. We didn't know your relationship. No. Y'all were like barely dating. So it's like, now you want it's, God to kill Peter Parker? Like, it was just it's weak. It's just man. forced. It was just weak. It was weak. Yeah. yeah. But, anyways, let's move on to question 10. The last question. Out of all five Spider Man films that have been released, which one is the highest grossing film worldwide? Uh, we're talking about the three Sam Raimi, the two amazing. Spider Verse is not on this list. Just Spider Verse is not on this list. Oh man, I want to say it's still Spider Man Three. I think that was a almost a billion dollar movie. You're correct. Okay. Spider-Man yeah. Spider Man Three, eight hundred and ninety million. Mm hmm. Damn. That yeah. close to a billion. All I was right. with you, man. I thought it was like up towards a billion. Yeah, for some reason I heard that. Maybe that's worldwide in DVD sales or something like that, but I don't know. Yeah. How'd I do? Five you got, out of ten? Uh, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. You got six right, four wrong, so you got a passing grade, man. Oh, okay. I'll call that passing, yeah. That's positive, man. That's positive. But, um, yeah, man, um, it's – it's look, dude, it's always nice to come on here and, and talk. I know this is blown by. We're already, like, almost an hour into this. So, uh, oh, dang. We, we definitely got to do this again sometime, bro. Absolutely. Yep, I got you. you just let me know. Absolutely, man. Well, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, you know, just another great chat with another great guest. We'll, we'll definitely have him on the back, the main show again when his other projects start coming out. And, Can't um, wait for that. Yeah, we're going to deep dive into that. You know, me and Mike love to get into that type of stuff. So, but yeah, anyways, um, this has been Zach for Jordan, for Mike, for everybody. We'll see you next week.